worry, I'm good. I got pulled over because I wasn't speeding. I'm back. I'm back here in the Catskills and I'm back to work on this bus. It's July and uh, it's hot and I came out solo to get some work done. We're going to do some of the fiddly bits under the dash and whatnot um, and get this car a little more prepped and assessed and ready to go. I just drove 12 hours um, in old blue there and it was, a, it was a good drive. Got pulled over by the cops once and uh, Anyway, I think it's time for a beer and some swimming. Here's the kind of crap we have to pack to do a trip like this. I've got a fully rebuilt blower assembly, so that's what's going to go into that bus. That's going to save a ton of time, and that's going to be full of mice. And the blower was locked solid in this one. That's pretty common. So I put a new motor in, new heater flaps and all that, and then we can just hot swap them. And then tools and parts and this, that, and the other thing. And I think we're going to do another rescue mission on the way home. So a lot of stuff. I got a key made based on the code on the lock. Let's see if it fits. Let's see if it works. Yes, way to go, Justin Bauman, my key guy. Still got these factory, uh, I hate these bolts. Um, they're tapered heads, so you can't get anything on them. They're supposed to never be tampered with. So we'll tamper with them using some, some grippy boys. And uh, yeah, we'll get these off. We'll replace these with normal bolts. This one now, that's a good fog light switch. And the wires are probably good, so we'll probably keep that and just change out the fog lights. That's more or less how that comes out. Well, we got the dash off. Let's take a look at what's hiding behind there. That's uh, fancy ketchup from Burger King, but that's definitely an H.J. Hines label. That's important. Uh, stereo is very wired in. There's a lot of RCA things, which tells me there's at least one amp somewhere on this car and probably a subwoofer too. That's going to get entertaining to figure out. And then, um, yeah, everything looks not that bad. We'll go through it and piece out all the wires and figure it all out. Looks like I broke the cap off that because I'm pretty sure there was a cap on there. So maybe we'll find it, but that little guy's missing. That's what I expected. Look at that. There's creatures homes in there. They live there. We have to clear that out. End of the day and the dash and the blower assembly are out. Lots of mice in there. Got to get a vacuum out here tomorrow, hopefully, and clean. And then we'll put it back together better. We'll make it's it 6 a.m. on another day. Trying to get ahead of the heat. It is going to be a hot day today. So we've got our Milwaukee M18 vacuum cleaner that we stole from the resort. This thing is really good, and we're going to suck up all of this crap. Literal crap. Spray it down. Let's spray some of this rusty juice back there in the rusty bits. I use the Rust-Oleum Rust Dissolver Gel. I've used a bunch of these products, including some way more expensive ones. And this one from the orange store has always proven the best. Ooh, look at those aeration holes. Letting the sunlight in. Back here behind the headlight, there's this speaker. This is like a PA system. We'll maybe leave that wired in and play with that later. That might be great. While the dash is out, we're gonna go ahead and install a furnace. Uh, putting the furnaces behind the dash is my new favorite spot for them. And uh, this is a cheap diesel one. It's a knockoff of the much better Eberspacher units. Uh, but the reason I went with this one is because it was available, it was kind of a last minute decision, and it has the exact same bolt pattern as the fancier one. So while the dash is out, I'll do the mods to add this sucker, and we can always hot swap it later uh, just through the glove box. So we will put this in, and you know, we might be driving this bus home in the winter just because of when this project's likely to end. And this will be a nice unit to have. Going with the old measure once, cut twice kind of approach. I really just want to slap this baby in there. Uh, I've done this twice now, so this is the third time, so I don't have to put as much thought in. We're just going to kind of copy what we did on that bus, more or less. Dimensions should be eh, and then we'll just yeah, big Very holes. little. We basically want to center on that seam and go about there-ish, so maybe just off-center. Right about there we'll poke our first hole, and that'll be for our exhaust, I think, or intake. I don't know. Inch and a quarter holes. They're a little big, so I can wiggle. Just, just do it. It took... I think I'm 15 minutes into this. Don't spend your whole day dreaming. 
You don't even have to take that off. Leave the motor on. That was a mistake. Leave all that on. Mocker in place. Poke your holes. Dunzo. Let's just go ahead and spray our holes with a little bit of random paint that we found. Oh, yeah. That's the right color. I got it at a garage sale, so you know it's now good. We need to poke a new hole like this one over here for another one of these. And this will be our hot air vent. And uh, I'm just measuring up the same distance from this bottom line, give or take. Ah, big chunk. I don't know, that might need stitches. We'll clean it up. That's why we keep a first aid kit. Well, we put it all back together, thanks to a good first aid kit. It is imperative that you have a good first aid kit in your bus, whether you're camping or working on it. And if you're just working on it at home, you need to have a first aid kit at home, ready and available, and an eye wash station. You can buy a $30 disposable eye wash station and be ready and prepared for that, because safety glasses don't always cut it. Anyway, thanks to my first aid kit, um, I'm probably going to be good. I don't think I need stitches because I'd be two hours from the closest hospital and over an hour from the nearest place that could stitch me up. So I have to be self-reliant. And at the very least, I would have had to put myself back together well enough to drive there. So be prepared for those kind of things. And, you know, now I get to wear a glove. Let's start declustering the wire. There is an alarm system I'm taking out completely. The relays and stuff for the auxiliary lights, I might leave those in for now, even if we don't use them but the alarm system's coming out. Uh, any non, any weird stereo wiring's coming out. So it's a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff to remove. This just has to spend some time being fiddly. That's interesting. The main power cable, um, they cut that, spliced in a relay, which is kind of odd, but they stole power off this in a very odd way. So we're gonna undo everything gonna do it back up to stock and then we'll deal with it from there that might not be the right move but that's the move for gotta now. love black power wires that's that's always good you always fuse the black one that's insane here's all the wires we didn't need um, this is all the factory non-factory alarm system and yeah they they really put that in there um, I'm glad to not have these anymore okay cut all that crap out and put in one of these uh, shrink tubiny boys that's a little better and we'll do that throughout. We'll keep improving. This may look like a mess to some people, but I've done a lot of these and I understand them well. And what I like to do is add a 10 gauge red wire with a fuse uh, to one of these back pins here. And that'll we're gonna build hubs over there. In the middle, we're gonna have a hub for ground, a hub for switched ignition, and a hub for positive, hot. So this is my, my hot plug, comes off any of these three here. And then this is my switched ignition, black and yellow. I like to use the appropriate wire when possible. And it comes off any of these three here. We picked up this pigtaily boy there, but we want to fuse that too. And then we add a big old 10 gauge ground over to our groundy boy here. And then we'll put them into these little dehusets here and we'll have a hub so we can plug in our stereo and our 12 volt adapters and our things. We can put our things over there easily later. That's the way to do okay, it. Okay, so in here we cleaned it up and we de-rusted it a little bit. We've got some aeration holes that'll let some air in, so we'll tape those up with the shiny tape from the backside. Let's spray that down with some uh, stuff that'll keep that rust from spreading. This stuff here is my favorite uh, rust encapsulator. Eastwood Heavy Duty Anti-Rust in the can. It's a wax-based product. And you just zip-zap it on there. And it's pretty much done. Got all the uh, stereo stuff wired in um, and de-wired all their old crap. So everything else should work exactly right. And we'll be able to plug in a modern head unit, which will be the nice. The out is such a daunting job for most vanning and owners, but it's really not that hard. It just takes time. And after you've done it enough times, it's really, really effortless. So now I know what every color wire is and stuff. So it's, it's pretty simple. Anyway, time to put it back together. So we got that all encapsulated and cleaned up, demoused and whatnot. Oh, we got our diesel furnace in there. That's pretty cool. It's uh, right up against the motor for that, but that's fine. It'll work. Um, if anything, I would have just tilted it this way a hair, but it should do just fine. So we'll wire that in later. I'll probably put in a grommet for the wiring now, though. I ran into a problem. I didn't account for it. This blower box is a late model. It is different than the one that came out. 
Uh, the early ones have the output hose down there and it goes around the back. The late ones have the output hose up here. So it'll all be fine on that side. Three of the four pipes are fine, but I need to get a this to a that. And I don't know how to do that. I'm sure that hose exists. I just gotta find it. So I gotta buy one somewhere. When it's too hot, just go to the local swimming hole, forage for some berries, put them in some cool vodka. Not a bad way to take a little break. Cheers, friends. The dash is mighty faded. Let's put some of this mother's stuff on it. It's basically uh, um, armor all, but I didn't have any at home. So we just spray this down. The thing that people screw up with these vinyl resurrection products, just slather it up and let it soak let that chill for 45 minutes before you go giving her the rub down what's it gonna do get better Things are coming to life slowly look at that 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 turned on anything else though huh yes full blower half blower baby blower we're good it was nice spending a few days in the summer months up here working on the bus. I'm pretty confident with the way it's coming together. I think, you know, we got a lot of big hurdles ahead still, but this car is going to drive home. I'm really excited about it. So, you know, I'm just going to keep clipping away at it. I'll come back. I'll do some more work. Eventually, we'll throw an engine at it and we'll drive it home. I hope you've been enjoying this series. Uh, make sure you leave a comment with your favorite thing, all that. And, uh, you know, thanks for the support. That's what motivates me to keep driving hundreds of miles to come work on cars that are very broken and then make them drive home. The beginning. How long has the bus been sitting? Seven years. Okay. But seven Why? years I parked it because the head gasket was leaking. Okay. And I knew that it needed to be fixed. And then little by little, it didn't get done. And then little by little, it sat, it sat. And so what sat. are we gonna do? We're gonna take the engine that's been rebuilt and we're gonna put it in here. And Craig said he's gonna fire this van up. You're gonna drive this home. Then we're gonna drive this home. Yeah. Let's fix it in the field. It's the best way. <laughs> yep, we're at a campground on the river. <laughs> You're camping in this, right? Yeah, I'm gonna probably camp in it. Well, you have to. Yeah. We've got the engine all cleaned up here. Uh, you know, you gotta make them clean while they're out. We put a new throw out bearing in there and uh, we're using this cooler and some uh, rough cut pieces of lumber as a workbench. And we've got about three hours before it rains. So let's put this engine in. I get this lined up. Go ahead. Yeah, Don't push on the push rod tubes. Or, yeah, okay, you're good. Push it in there. Something. Or rotate. Or push on the end. We got it. There it goes. Yep. We're getting there, we there now. We're half an inch away. Keep going, guys. Boom. All right, let me get this bolt through. I want it move through. Come on. What's this fucking doing? Yeah. John's over here yeah. getting that side on, and then, you know, then the engine's in. We did it. So we're in pretty good shape. Uh, the big thing was trying to get the engine hung before it rains. It's probably going to rain, and that's in, and that's one last thing to worry about. Here you go, Brian. You can use this toothbrush. That's right. good. This is into the There you go. That one's yours now. You own that. Next up. Hey, it is about to rain. We are quitting because it's hot and it's about to rain. Also, there's a lot of people here now. And next we get to work on their bus because it's broken too. So you gotta go under there and clear up the fuel system. A well, lobster claw action. You can do it. Oh, we're building this car. So this car, we towed this car in uh, on a flatbed with the engine in a different car. And then we're we're building this car. Okay. So it's gonna drive home tomorrow. But this morning it had no engine. Yeah, these guys are great. This is what we do. Let's see it. Open it up. Set it. That is a dry spell. That needs a Tinder date. <laughs> Look at this bug. Oh, it just landed on John. It was definitely bugging me. It's so big. It's a monster. Send it.
adventure. I'm packing up old blue here. We're gonna go east. I don't know where. I don't know when. I don't know for how long. I've got like two weeks available. We're gonna stop at a VW bus camp out tonight and then we're gonna go on to the Catskills, work on the bus up there a little bit. And then I don't know. I made it back into the mountains and here we are. Let's get some work done. I don't know if this is chapter three. I don't know if this is chapter two. I don't know where we're at. All I know is I got this car. It still needs a lot of work done or we're never gonna be able to drive this hard. So let's fix it. First up, let's uh, deal with the fuel system. Uh, we don't know what's in here. I'm sure it's garbage, uh, but we're also gonna take the sending unit out and clean the system out and all of that. You can take the sending unit out of a synchro with the gas tank in place. Um, people don't seem to know that. Uh, so we're gonna do all that from this side. It's gonna suck more because it's got air conditioning. And uh, we'll cut open the fuel pump and all that good garbage. I was supposed to replace the fuel tank straps, but they didn't come in time. So we'll just try to get the bolts off these ones and we'll do that later. Anyway, let's dive there's in. There's no liquid at all. Oh, there is. Oh, okay, that's surprising. It had gas in it. We got bolts out. This comes right out. This is actually easier than most modern cars. So if you, this took an hour. You can do the sending unit with the uh, thing in the car. Wow, it's in really bad shape. I can't wait to show you. There's a hose attached to this that goes inside the tank, but it's coming all the way out. It shouldn't because I think it's just dissolved. Oh my gosh, it's so disgusting. Oh, oh, check that out. That hose is just in very, very bad shape. This actually isn't as bad as I've seen. This is reusable. We'll see something there. Okay, got We're our gonna hole. put this in. This is a brand new sending unit made by uh, JP Group. Now this part is legendarily bad. Professionals say that this is not worth installing. Basically, it either doesn't work at all or it's completely inaccurate. But it's the only one available right now. So we either put the old Rusty Gross one back in, which I'm actually not opposed to because it probably works. We're gonna keep that because I imagine this one sucks. And we're gonna put this one in. So we're gonna put this one in and we're gonna hope for the best. I'm gonna regret that. I got the gas tank all cleaned out, reached my arm in there, made it nice and gross, got that delightful old gas smell spread all around. It's, you know, it's not the finest of, of scents. If you wanted to attract a mate, I would probably go with uh, the Matcha Number 26 by Lavabu, but I'm going with old gasoline today. So now we just punch this ring out through unhappiness and back her into there and then toss a new one in from the inside, which seems impossible. You could just not do that, but I've definitely ruined these studs. So we'll just, and then, uh, and then it's done. So I pulled these transmission mounts off. Let's just clean them up a little bit. You know, we're in a field, so we just gotta drill in a little brush. We'll clean them up, spray them with some juice. So I got these all cleaned up. Are they perfect? No. Can we stick them in a rust for a week? Yeah. Could we sandblast them and paint them? Yeah. But we're not gonna do that because we're in a field. So the thing is, preservation is good. Restoration is not necessary on every component. Unless you're going to get this down to bare metal and put primer on it and then paint it, you're not necessarily doing this any services. So all we're doing is getting rid of the big stuff, degreasing it, and spraying it with wax, not paint. Paint has to stick to a clean surface. Wax does not. It just needs to stick to anything. And it's a thixotropic wax, so even when it scrapes off or chunks a little bit, it kind of heals itself. So we're going to use Eastwood Heavy Duty Anti-Rust, and it's going to give it a nice black finish, and it's going to preserve it. It's not gonna be worse in any way. Sometimes you can't go above and beyond. Just get it done. You're allowed to do it twice. Look at this area in front of the gas tank. We can see some rust. These brake lines were inspected very thoroughly, but they look to be in very good shape because you can't get to them once the trans is in. But anyway, this is where these rust out and they rust through the body a little bit. This is the reason there's sort of a step above this that's real bad usually. So if you pull the gas tank, you find that it's a nightmare. 
you never put the car back together and it sits forever. It doesn't matter. A small hole there is fine. So we're just going to go ahead and ignore it, strap her back together, and uh, clean this up a little bit. So we got our little zerpity dude here, and we're going to just and then hit it with the Eastwood stuff. In there with some soap and things and got all this tar out. This is like roofing tar that was sitting in the bottom of the gas tank. And then I took this thing and I made the hole bigger using the only tool I had, a pocket knife. So I did a, you know, horrible job. And this thing is like a strainery device. And we'll get it in there, put the longer hose on. I'm getting pretty exhausted with the fuel stuff on this side, but I'm done with it. The sending units in, I just got to attach some hoses and snake things i took some bracket trees off and cleaned them up with some paint and stuff so we're watching paint dry i'll get back to this this is a tomorrow job now let's do the other side that side's gonna okay. suck well we got this off and this is in bad shape see all the things and it's got all holes in it right so we got to clean that up a little bit the way we do that we wire wheeled it and then we're going to take some of this here poor patch epoxy putty it's got the two parts like that and you just mash them together like some high school kids after prom and then you smicker it in, in, into the stuff there and sand it down. It's pretty good. Good for field repairs. Works really well. Holds up. Fix this up with some of that poor epoxy putty. And we'll let it sit for a little bit and then sand it down. Do some proper body work to oh. it. Just rattled her off a little bit with the uh, Rust-Oleum Professional in the gloss black. So it's got the glosses to it. It's a performance part it's now. A comparison of the condition of the old filler neck seal and the new one. I don't think we'll reuse this one. I think it's gone bad. It's also gooey. Ugh. Finishing up a fuel filter and new fuel lines all throughout and uh, putting the sending unit reattached. But check this out. This right here, this unused plug is actually for a diff lock. So what I didn't know or I suspected would not be the case is that I figured this wire wouldn't be here because uh, this is a non diff lock car, but that means it has the harness. That's a big deal. So if we wanted to add a diff lock, it's just a matter of adding the vacuum plumbing system. And that might even be here. So that's that's interesting. Let's just tuck that away for now. Look at how nice that is. Oh yes, a new grommet there, newly done this, new all of this, stainless there, all up in here. Ooh, the freshness, it'll be good. And then in here, we've got new fuel lines run to a new fuel filter a new fuel pump all that we're gonna be in good shape other than that tank strap has a busted off bolt that's gonna be a nightmare but that one's done well it's off new one will go on we're missing we got this known good tested good bosch fuel pump on this adapter boy it's a different mount i got off the amazonians and i drilled new holes here this should fit the new strap when the strap comes and we might put this somewhere else i don't have any isolators for it but these usually work without isolators just fine I'm leaving the pump off for now because I want to install it properly once the tank strap is in place. But it's here in the vehicle, ready for the next It's in pretty good shape. This was a known good used battery. I mean, it, it started cars, but not well. It's pretty old. So I brought it up here to power things up and I put it on this little solar trickle charger. It's been maintaining it at like 14 volts, but I just took it off for 24 hours and the battery's sitting at 12 too. So this probably isn't that good a battery. When we come back, we're gonna bring a proper battery, probably move this one over there, use it as an auxiliary. Let's see what's inside this transmission. So we can tell a lot from the drain plug. We could pull the bell housing, that would tell us even more. But let's just see what kind of hair we get out of the gearbox oil here. Hopefully there is some and it's not just empty and it's sat that way. Yeah, that's good news. Um, no visible chunks yet, but this is a good bit of hair. But this is spot on for, you know, the mileage and stuff. As long as we don't have a tooth in there. So we'll let this uh, sort of simmer down. The big thing with these gearboxes is they were originally sold to never be serviced. So the dealer told you to never change the fluid. This does look like original fluid. Um, it could be, it's hard to say. Uh, at least we're not getting a lot of water or anything out of it. So as long as we don't have any chunks of teeth in here, this gearbox should be good. So here's our gearbox oil all smeared out. No teeth, just a little bit of magnetic stuff. That's expected. I think this is going to be a good box. Let's put some fresh juice. Anyway, uh, it was time for some new juice. So we put in Fram Premium Gear Oil, the 8090. 
This is the crappiest stuff I could find. My recommendation is to always buy the lowest quality transaxle fluid you can find when you're getting the car running. Same with motor oil. Run it for an hour and then change it. Because honestly, you're just putting all that stuff into suspension. Instead of putting the fancy expensive Swepco gear oil in here, which is what I want it to have long term, we're just going to run this. After a few miles, we'll change it. It'll be good. It'll make it home. Well, I think that concludes this chapter. Uh, I just came up here for a couple days, got a lot of work done on that gas tank, and now it's time to go into vacation mode. I'm going to go cruise the East Coast. I've got no destinations and no plans. I've got about nine days to go fiddle around in New England. It's going to be a great adventure, and I thank you for coming along on this one. Thanks for the support. Don't forget to smash that, you know, notification bell and all that crap. Um, seriously, it helps. We've been working really hard to bring you this content, and this bus is a really cool story. I'm really excited to share with all of you. Thanks for tuning in so far. Cheers, friend. Nice. Hey, thank you for bringing champagne. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. So this is my buddy Bill. He's driving my bus and we're uh, going to rescue a tortoise. Is that what's up? Yep, here we are. Oh, well, tortoise, we'll, tortoise rescue. We'll get okay, it. Okay, so we just got back from our first side adventure here in Rhode Island. Uh, we just went and picked up this tortoise um, to take to a rescue. What's up, buddy? We can be friends. Gotta love Newport. I screwed up, but now I'm in downtown Boston at rush hour. I mean, I really screwed up. This sucks. Don't, just don't go to Boston. No one should ever go to Boston. And don't do it now. I, I think I live right here now. Oh, I get to move four feet forward. Let's do that. After all that, I was at least able to make it to this little mom and pop bakery called Duncan and get something called a Boston cream pie people were telling me about don't google boston cream pie that will wake you up that's that's disgusting this is a donut nope similar results i am somewhere in maine i don't really know where but i found a pizza hut that still offers dine-in service so we're gonna go experience the year 1997 let's see what it's like i ended up somewhere in maine fixing this bus they uh, got in contact with me through Instagram and said something like too bad you're not in Maine and I was like hold my beer I could be so I came to Maine and we're gonna figure out why their car sucks currently it sucks so the issue the owner is having is they just put a go westy rebuilt motor in 2.4 2.45 and it is just cutting out and the mechanic that put it in wasn't very Vanagon savvy, and it's making no power. It's got issues. I think they're fuel delivery related. Now, the problem is I came here without any spare parts for testing. But because I came from working on the project bus in East Durham, because I was working on the fuel system there, the only things I have with me are fuel related parts. And I think we have a fuel issue. So that's just random good luck. Let's see if we can't fix the only this. box I have with me is fuel delivery. And I got everything in there. <laughs> Tweaking some things. I'm gonna switch out some of the spark plugs here, taking out the uh, the old single pointers and putting in some of the old uh, these ones, the NGK BP six ETs. I have found that these spark plugs just make Vanagon's run so good. Vanagon's love a good threesome spark plug. You want to get rid of your single bangers and do the threesomes. That might not have been the right terms. Well, you want the threesome. I'm in downtown Burlington, Vermont, just wandering about aimlessly. Gonna do some yoga, eat some food. I wish I had pants. I want this I motor. Know. This is gonna be the motor that goes in the synchro. I'm excited about this.
fit the whole thing in <laughs> in a singular shot. It's, it's as big as the garage. It's bigger than the garage. You had to make the garage. It's, this is the coolest, weirdest VW van I've ever seen. I got a motor. This is the motor we're gonna put in the project bus. So I was out in Vermont. Well, I wasn't in Vermont. I was in Maine fixing someone else's bus. And then I remembered, hey, I kinda wanna go to Burlington. And this guy, let me back up. I screwed up. I also bought that. As I was leaving, I just said, hey, do you have any used Subaru conversion stuff? And he goes, yeah, I got a whole takeout conversion. Took it out of this car. Modified harness, everything, full complete kit. I'm like, nah, -uh. yeah. So that sucks because now I own that too. I literally have no money left. There is no money left. But I'm going home with multiple options. Got the motor transported from Vermont to the bus. Now to get it out and then to put it all in. wrapped up in a Harbor Freight tarp and tucked in for a month that should be good keeps the mice out hopefully no one steals it and scraps it stay safe buddy we're home 2175 miles later that was a good adventure i hope you enjoyed